Okay, this video is all about trying to make realistic fake prop food for your theatrical production or even for displays. When I was starting out, I would try to find out how you could make something look like real food but absolutely inorganic and how close you could get that and what supplies and materials are needed. And I've learned a lot over the years, things that you would never think will look like real food. Housing insulation foam is probably my biggest staple for food props. It can be bought in four by eight foot sheets at Home Depot. It's sturdy, lightweight, keeps a solid shape, and is very easily carved with a file, bandsaw, or a box knife. And if you ever need a piece of foam that is thicker than the sheet provided, you can use spray insulation foam in a can to glue the pieces together. The spray foam expands, so you will need to place something heavy on top of the pieces as they dry overnight. I've used the insulation to shape things like donuts, boiled potatoes, pork chops, cookies, candy, cheese, desserts, pies, gnocchi pasta, and even fish fillets. I've discovered a thick special effect latex covering called Jackson 600. The combination of insulation foam and Jackson 600 gives a nice rigid light prop that's easy to shape and paint. I even use upholstery foam in its many thicknesses as it's easy to cut, shape, and cover. I would use this medium for a food prop that needs to be more flexible, such as squash pieces, sauces, meat slices, meat loaves, bread loaves and bread slices, even Twinkies. Simple craft store latex is a really great covering that gives food props a nice flexibility and shine. The latex works best as a covering with the upholstery foam. The latex port alone is also great for sauces, by itself or on food. If the sauce is in a dish, for example, I would use cotton batting as a filler and then pour the latex on top of that. And if you use a thicker pour alone, it's perfect to make fried eggs. Just make sure to pour the latex on a non-porous surface, such as glass or plexiglass and you need to allow a lot more time to dry with a thicker pour. If you're looking for a sauce that has texture, such as spaghetti sauce, you can just add crunched up insulation foam into the mixture. Once it's painted, it will look like it has hamburger in it. Garnishes on your food are as simple as cutting up felt pieces, foam, fabric, or even plastic plants. Felt, as well, in its many available colors, is a great find for making meat or cheese slices, or even as a rind to cover cheese wedges. You can add latex to parts of them for a shine, or you can just paint texture onto the felt pieces. The Jackson 600 and latex coverings can be easily painted with enamel, acrylic, or even spray paint. One lesson I did learn in the past was that food always gets at least three different colors. For example, if an apple is red, then you need to add yellow spots and also brown spots. You can even add another shade of red in different areas. This is more realistic and will fool the audience's eyes into believing that it is real. I like to use fabric paints as well for any detail work, like seeds or for shadow and highlights in sliced nuts. Another must for me is a polyacrylic clear gloss. Food is almost always wet or shiny 
and a gloss will give it that final authentic touch. Although I can't show you all the ideas that I've come up with and made, I can give you this quick sampling of some of the creations I've done. things to test these on my family. I will put fake donuts out, fake meat, fake pasta, and see how far they'll get before they realize, what is this? Have fun! 